Good day students. Today I'll be your teacher in this lesson. But before we proceed to our lesson, let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord as we pray the opening prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for looking after our school. Thank you that you love each and every one of us here. Help us to learn, play, and share together so that the wonderful world you have made becomes more beautiful every day. Amen. My dear students, I would like to introduce to you our objectives. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to recognize who the Byzantine Empire. Second, to be able to illustrate the decline of the Byzantine Empire. And lastly, to be able to reflect the fall of the Roman Empire. So the first part of our discussion will be the Byzantine Empire. What is Byzantine Empire? What were the key elements of Byzantine Christianity? How did Justinian extend Byzantine power? Why did Byzantine Empire collapse? What was the legacy and heritage of the Byzantine Empire? So we have here the terms and people. Number one is Constantinople, formerly Byzantium, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. Trivia, what is Constantinople nowadays? Ang Constantinople karon, mao na siya ang gitawag og Istanbul. Constantinople, officially renamed as Istanbul in 1930. The city is today the largest city and financial center of the Republic of Turkey. So ang, ang Istanbul, located na siya sa Turkey. Istanbul is a major port and the largest city in Turkey. The province and the city are situated on both sides of Bosporus. The strait that separates Europe from Asia. Next is Justinian, emperor of the Byzantine Empire from 527 to 565. He rebuilt Constantinople and made reforms to the law. We also have Justinian's Code, the Corpus Juris Civilis or Body of Civil Law a comprehensive collection of Roman legal writings assembled by Justinian. And we also have Autocrat, a sole ruler with absolute power. Theodora, impress of the Byzantine Empire, Justinian's wife, and a fearless and powerful co-ruler. Patriarch, in the Byzantine and Roman empires, the highest church official in a major city. Icon, holy image of Christ, the Virgin Mary, or a saint venerated in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Great Schism, the official split between the Roman Catholic and Byzantine churches. In 610 AD, the Eastern Roman Empire officially became known as the Byzantine Empire. But by the way, what do you mean by AD? Do you have any idea about uh, the meaning of AD? So the meaning of AD is Anno Domini. Let's proceed. The capital city was Constantinople, formerly Byzantium, center of the empire, favorable location for trade wealth and splendor when we talk about preserving culture the byzantine empire promoted the blending of greek roman christian and middle eastern cultures over time much of the art and architecture reflected styles of middle east or persia while retaining the basis of rome most importantly through the Byzantines preserved the learning and writing from ancient Greece and Rome. Much of it had been lost or destroyed in the West by invasion of the Germanic tribes. 
The Byzantines, however, wanted to establish themselves separate from Rome. For example, they changed the official language from Latin to Greek. Speaking of Byzantine Christianity, other ways in which the Byzantines differed was in their views of Christianity. While there are many similarities, they did disagree on a great many number of issues. So here is the similarities and differences between Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic. So na asya comparison. Ang Roman Catholic o ang Eastern Orthodox. Let's go first to Roman Catholic. Services conducted in Latin. In Eastern Orthodox, services conducted in Greek. In Roman Catholic, the Pope is authority over all, including kings and emperors. While in Eastern Orthodox, the emperor claims authority over the patriarch and other officials. In Roman Catholic, priests are celibate, meaning cannot marry or have children. While in Eastern Orthodox, priests can marry and have children, and of course, wife. In Roman Catholic, divorce is not permitted, while in Eastern Orthodox, divorce permitted in certain cases. And in Roman Catholic, icons are allowed in worship, but in Eastern Orthodox, icons are forbidden or idols. Kanang ato bitang mga santos na to mga katoliko, di ba natay, santos inigsulod na to sa simbahan, makakita magitag ribulto. So, sa, as, a Roman, as a Roman Catholic, allowed man na to, while in Eastern Orthodox, forbidden. So, forbidden na nila. But, they also have similarities. Both religions are based of the teachings of Jesus and the Bible. Both have baptisms. So, pariho silang anay buniyag. Both seek converts. At this juncture, we have the upheaval in the church. Since the split of the Western and Eastern Rome, the church also experienced as schism or split. The split cannot be traced back to one single event, but many disagreements between Eastern and Western viewpoints over cultural differences, politics, the Pope, Church celebrations created a divide in the church that could not be repaired. This was known as the Great Schism or East-West Schism, made official in 1054 when the Pope and Patriarch excommunicated each other. For me, the word excommunicated is uh, complicated. Because excommunication is an institutional act of religious censure used to end or at least regulate the communion of a member of a congregation with other members of the religious institution who are, who are in normal communion with each other. As you can see, we have here the illustration of uh, Pope Francis and the Pope of Orthodox. Meanwhile, Justinian was perhaps the greatest Byzantine emperor. He hoped his empire would be as great as ancient Rome. Justinian wanted to recover the lands lost to the invaders and reconstitute the Roman Empire. Justinian was able to take back much, but not all, of the territory that had once belonged to Rome. We have here the Justinian's Code. For his empire, Justinian organized laws with over 4,000 written laws. They are better known as Justinian's Code. This code was based on old Roman law. These laws define issues such as citizenship, marriage, inheritance, slavery, property rights as well as criminal acts and punishments. This code is significant because it laid out rules for a massive kingdom which helped him both unify and control it. Many laws or legal systems today are based off of Justinian's code. So, let's have a recap on Saganitong Corpus Juris Civilis Romani. 
So, maoto siya ang gitawag og The Justinian Code. Very good. Justinian also launched a massive building program in Constantinople. During his time, he built massive walls to protect the city, help protect the city from attack over 1,000 years. He also had many bridges, aqueducts, and churches built. So class, on some siyang aqueduct or aqueduct is a water course constructed to carry water from a source to a distribution point far away. In modern engineering, the term aqueduct is used for any systems of pipes, ditches, canals, panels, and other structures used for this purpose. So, mani siya atong makita dari sa screen, mani siya gitawag og aqueduct or a water supply. Now, let's proceed to Hagia Sophia. The Hagia Sophia. The greatest building achievement, however, was the Church of the Hagia Sophia, meaning Holy Wisdom in Greek. The Hagia Sophia is important for both religious and architectural reasons. It is known far in domes and was the largest cathedral in the world for nearly 1,000 years. The Hagia Sophia was the center of Eastern Orthodox Christianity and was known as Vatican of the East. It was later converted to a Muslim mosque in, in 1453 after the Ottoman Turks took control of Constantinople. It remained a mosque until 1935 when the Turkish government made it into a museum. So, Murag Sayang Siano from Eastern Orthodox Christianity or the largest cathedral nahimo siyang Muslim mosque nahimo siyang simbahan sa Muslim even museum na siya karon but still a mosque so unsa man gyud kalahian sa Roman Catholic Orthodox and Muslim ang Roman Catholic pwede siya magsuot og bisan unsa nga sinina for as long as formal while ang orthodox and muslim almost the same ang ilang attire so kung naa ka sa middle east adili gyud ka maka-identify nga orthodox day na siya or muslim uh, because they also have uh, the same language orthodox can speak Arabic language. So, and uh, most of all, pariho lang siya intonation, pariho lang siya tunada. May ngunan siya, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. So, ang iyang attire sad, nakatub siya, ang lalaki nga orthodox, while ang babae nga orthodox, nakasuot na siya og abaya. Same with Muslim women. But still, naapagit siya difference. Kay ang Saudja, or asawa na siya o dato nga Muslim, ang matar may ipakita. So, gitabunan ang tibok, ulo, hasta ang baba. Matar agi ni Gilit siya gamay mura siya ninja. So, delikado sa na kung imuna siyang tutukan kay uh, na tendency nga makadawat kag punishment. Way back when I was in Qatar, an nag selfie ko sa akong workplace suddenly gikasabaan gid ko og customer nga Saudia nasuko siya kay basin daw maapil siya og capture sa ako ang selfie which is bawal nila let's have another trivia ang Hagia Sophia mo na siya ang location sa Assassin's Creed Revelations so if you're familiar with Assassin's Creed Revelations Kwani siya is an action adventure video game developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. So Montreal, Canada. So it is the fourth major installment in the Assassin's Creed series and a direct sequel 2010's Assassin's Creed. So kung mahilig mo sa mga video game, pwede mo siyang madua sa koan playstation 4 android microsoft windows xbox 
360, PlayStation 3, Symbian Limited, and Xbox One. So, pwede naman siya madua. But, um, nowadays, ang gipang dua ninyo, I know, uh, mo na siya gitawa na ML or Mobile Legend. May pinaka-latest karon. Let's proceed to Hippodrome. Another building worth mentioning was the Hippodrome. While not built by Justinian, it was impressive to say the least. Throughout the Byzant Byzantine period, the Hippodrome was the center of the city's sporting and social life. So we have uh, the example, Circus Maximus. So the Circus Maximus is an ancient Roman chariot racing stadium and mass entertainment venue in Rome. So many siyang Hippodrome in Rome, Italy. In the valley between the Advent Adventine and Palatine Hills, it was the first and largest stadium in the ancient Rome. And its later empire. So, moto siya gitawag na to, Circus Maximus. Horse and chariot racing was a popular pastime of the ancient world. In fact, the work Hippodrome come from Greek Hippos, meaning horse or cabayo, and dromos or path or Dalan. At its largest, the Hippodrome sat over 100,000 spectators. It was said to have been elaborately decorated with works of art and tapestries. It also featured glorious bronze statues of horses, gods, and former emperors. How about Theodora? Justinian was married to a beautiful woman named Theodora. She was very intelligent, decisive, and strong woman. From all accounts, Justinian treated her as an equal and frequently relied on her for advice. Here in our next slide, we have the Nika riots. In 532, a chariot race at the Hippodrome get out of hand and violence and chaos flooded the streets of Constantinople. Several senators saw the, ch the chaos as an opportunity to overthrow Justinian. In fact, Justinian was scared for his life and was ready to flee the city in fear. However, his wife Theodora proclaimed, It is better to die a ruler than to live as nothing. Justinian instead sent an army and the riots were put down. It was Theodora's courage that is credited with saving her husband's rule. So here is Theodora. After the revolts, the city of Constantinople had to be rebuilt. Theodora aided in the rebuilding and the construction of aqueducts, bridges, and churches, which culminated in the creation of the Hagia Sophia. She also led a series of reforms and laws that elevated the rights, statues, and promoted equal treatment of women throughout the empire. For all this, she is the most famous woman in Byzantine history. Before we proceed to the fall of the Byzantines, my dear students, I have something to tell you. To eliminate our boredom, all you have to do is to sit back, relax, listen, and imitate our short icebreaker. Oh! Take it down. It's up, up, take it down, take it down. Up, up, take it down, take it down. Up, up, one stop.
get ready to cross our shoulders. It's gonna be nice and easy. Thank you so much, and now let's continue. After hundreds of years of glory, fortunes changed in the Byzantine Empire. The empire was almost continuously plagued by different groups along its border seeking more territory. Many attacks came from groups such as the Turks, Persians, Slavs, Vikings, and Mongols. Muslim armies started to gain control of much of the Mediterranean. The Crusades In 1095, the Byzantine Emperor Alexis I appealed to the Pope for help defeating the Muslim invaders. Seeing a great opportunity to gain back power in the East after the Great Schism, the Pope agrees. While temporal temporarily successful, the Crusades were, were an abject disaster. In fact, during the Fourth Crusade, the Western armies didn't even make it to the Holy Land to fight the Muslims. Running out of supplies, they attacked Constantinople instead. This just illustrated how bad the feelings were between the East and West. The empire never really recovers after this. So they had crisis and collapse. Constantinople falls. Ottoman Turks captured Constantinople in 1453 and renamed it Istanbul. Muslim influences replace Christian ones. Hagia Sophia is converted from a church to mosque. And now the question is, uh, why should we remember the Byzantines? The legacy of the Byzantine Empire, longevity, the empire lasted more than 1,000 years, a rare feat throughout history. Cultural diffusion, the Byzantines blended Roman culture, Greek learning with Christian beliefs and Middle Eastern influences. Preservation, classical learning of the Greeks and Romans, which otherwise would have been lost in the fall of Rome, was continued in the Byzantine Empire. In law, Justinian's code preserved Roman law and became the basis of many laws today. Spiritual Eastern Orthodox Christianity still exists in the areas such as Eastern Europe, Greece, and Russia. Lastly, we have the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Economic Troubles Decline begins after the Pax Romana in 3rd century. Invaders made trade unsafe on sea and on roads. The rich spent gold and silver on luxury items from Asia, which drained Rome of these precious metals. Rome began making coins with less silver, which caused inflation. Inflation is a drastic drop in the value of money coupled with rising prices for items. Agriculture decreased because of infertile soil and farmland destroyed by war. Food shortages, spread of disease. In military troubles, Germanic tribes were invading Rome. Soldiers no longer had discipline or loyalty to Rome. Soldiers had loyalty only to their commanders who fought not for Rome but to try to become the emperor. We have here the former Roman emperor named Nero. Nero was the fifth emperor of Rome. He was adopted by the Roman Emperor Claudius at the age of 13 and succeeded him to the throne. Nero seems to have been popular with his Praetorian guards and with lower class commoners in Rome and the provinces but was deeply resented by the Roman aristocracy. During the Circus Maximus, the Great Fire of Rome breaks out and destroys much of the city beginning on July 18 in the year 64. Despite the well-known stories, there is no evidence that the Roman Emperor Nero 
either started a fire or played the fiddle while it burned uh, because according to the history si Nero ang humahalakhak habang nasusunog ang Roma still he did use the disaster to further his political agenda and now let's integrate the lesson to technology by using the name of Nero in, in information and communication technology we have Nero ICT used the name Nero as a software so the software named Nero burning room or Nero burning read only memory commonly called Nero is an optical disc authoring program from Nero AG the software is part of the Nero multimedia suite but is also available as a standalone product it is used for burning and copying optical disc such as CDs VCDs and DVDs so ang Nero nga software sa information and communication technology gigamit na siya pang burn og mga salida mp3s or files so as you can see fronting plaza marcella na ay namaligya diha og mga pirated nga mga movies using dvd platform ang ilang software nga gigamit ana pag duplicate sa salida is nero burning room so ang icon sa Nero Burning Room or Nero Burning Software used Coliseum as their product icon. So the Coliseum is an oval amphitheater in the center of the city of Rome, Italy, just east of the Roman Forum. It is the largest ancient amphitheater ever built and is still the largest standing amphitheater in the world today, despite its age. So maon siya nga amphitheater ang or Colosseum ang nasunog during the fiddle of Nero. So that was the integration of this topic to information and communication technology. Now let's continue to military troubles during the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. To defend Rome Mercenaries were recruited, foreign soldiers who fought for money. We also have political troubles. Troubles in the empire made citizens lose patriotism for Rome. Being a political official was no longer thought to be an honor. Few people wanted to serve in the government. Out of 26 generals who became emperors, 25 met violent deaths. Temporary help. Diocletian in AD 284 became a strong leader. He doubled the Roman armies and hired German mercenaries. Persecuted Christians, he divided the Roman Empire into two sides East, Greek speaking, West, Latin speaking. He took over the East, but civil war broke out after his death. Constantine took over the West part of the Empire in AD 312, moved the capital to a strategic location in Greece in the East Byzantium, and renamed it Constantinople. He accepted Christianity. The East thrived while the West failed. The West falls. The West faced worse problems than the East that was far from invaders. From AD 376 to 476, huge member of Germanic tribes poured into Rome to get away from the fierce Huns. Attila, the Han was powerful chieftain who swept through the West. The West Falls. Attila negotiated with Pope Leo I and withdrew. He died in 453 and was no longer a threat. 
Germanic tribes continued to invade and finally the West was no longer Rome. But the Eastern Roman Empire will continue as the Byzantine Empire that will preserve Greek and Roman heritage. So my dear students, here is the tourist attraction in Rome, Italy from then and nowadays that's still standing. We have Colosseum, the Circus Maximus, the Pantheon, the Aqueduct, Public Baths, and Ark. Before we end up, let's have a short quiz in Google form. Pwede na siyang makita sa ato ang Google Meet chat box. So the link will be sent to Google Meet chat box. You may submit your answers after 30 minutes. And more importantly, your answer serve as your attendance for today. According to Theodore Roosevelt, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. And for Marcus Garvey, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. History is a Greek word which means literally just investigation. The only thing new in the world is the history you don't know. My name is Mr. Gerson C. Habines. See you once again. And now let us pray the closing prayer. For your comments, suggestions, reactions, please feel free to drop a virtual hands in the chat box. Thank you so much and have a nice day.